Now when all this was finished, all Israel who were present went out to the cities of Judah, and broke in pieces the pillars, and hewed down the Asherim, and broke down the high places, and the altars throughout all Judah and Benjamin, and in Ephraim and Manasseh, until they had destroyed them all. Then all the sons of Israel returned to their cities, every man to his possession. And Hezekiah appointed the divisions of the priests and of the Levites, division by division, each according to his service, the priests and the Levites, for burnt offerings and peace offerings, to minister in the gates of the camp of the Lord, and to give thanks and praise. The contribution of the king from his own possessions was for the burnt offerings, the burnt offerings of morning and evening, and the burnt offerings for the Sabbaths, the new moons, and the appointed feasts, as it is written in the law of the Lord. And he commanded the people who lived in Jerusalem to give the portion due to the priests and the Levites, that they might give themselves to the law of the Lord. As soon as the command was spread abroad, the sons of Israel gave in abundance the first fruits of grain, wine, oil, honey, and all of the produce of the field. And they brought in abundantly the tithe of everything. And the sons of Israel and Judah, who lived in the cities of Judah, also brought in the tithe of cattle and sheep, and the dedicated things which had been consecrated to the Lord their God, and laid them in heaps. In the third month they began to pile up the heaps, and finished them in the seventh month. When Hezekiah and the princes came and saw the heaps, they blessed the Lord and his people Israel. And Hezekiah questioned the priests and the Levites about the heaps. Azariah the chief priest, who was of the house of Zadok, answered him, Since they began to bring the contributions into the house of the Lord, we have eaten and had enough and have plenty left. For the Lord has blessed his people, so that we have this great store left. Then Hezekiah commanded them to prepare chambers in the house of the Lord, and they prepared them. And they faithfully brought in the contributions, the tithes, and the dedicated things. The chief officer in charge of them was Conaniah the Levite, with Shimei his brother as second, while Jehiel, Azaziah, Nahath, Asael, Jeremoth, Josabad, Eliel, Ismachiah, Mahath, and Benaiah were overseers assisting Conaniah and Shimei his brother by the appointment of Hezekiah the king and Azariah the chief officer of the house of God. And Kore the son of Imnah the Levite, keeper of the east gate, was over the freewill offerings to God to apportion the contribution reserved for the Lord and the most holy offerings. Eden, Miniamin, Jeshua, Shemaiah, Amariah, and Shechaniah were faithfully assisting him in the cities of the priests to distribute the portions to their brethren, old and young alike, by divisions except those enrolled by genealogy, males from three years old and upwards, all who entered the house of the Lord, as the duty of each day required, for their service according to their offices by their divisions. The enrollment of the priests was according to their father's houses, that of the Levites from twenty years old and upwards was according to their offices by their divisions. The priests were enrolled with all their little children, their wives, their sons, and their daughters, the whole multitude, for they were faithful in keeping themselves holy. And for the sons of Aaron the priests, who were in the fields of common land belonging to their cities, there were men in the several cities who were designated by name to distribute portions to every male among the priests and to every one among the Levites who was enrolled. Thus Hezekiah did throughout all Judah, and he did what was good and right and faithful before the Lord his God, and every work that he undertook in the service of the house of God in accordance with the law and the commandments, seeking his God, he did with all his heart and prospered. After these things and these acts of faithfulness, Sennacherib, king of Assyria, came and invaded Judah and encamped against the fortified cities, thinking to win them for himself. And when Hezekiah saw that Sennacherib had come and intended to fight against Jerusalem, he planned with his officers and his mighty men to stop the water of the springs that were outside the city, and they helped him. A great many people were gathered, and they stopped all the springs and the brook that flowed through the land, saying, Why should the kings of Assyria come and find much water? He set to work resolutely and built up the wall that was broken down and raised towers upon it. And outside it, he built another wall, and he strengthened the Milo in the city of David. He also made weapons and shields in abundance, and he set combat commanders over the people, and gathered them together to him in the square at the gate of the city, and spoke encouragingly to them, saying, Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid or dismayed before the king of Assyria, 
and all the horde that is with him, for there is one greater with us than with him. With him is an arm of flesh, but with us is the Lord our God, to help us and to fight our battles. And the people took confidence from the words of Hezekiah king of Judah. After this, Sennacherib king of Assyria, who was besieging Lachish with all his forces, sent his servants to Jerusalem, to Hezekiah king of Judah, and to all the people of Judah that were in Jerusalem, saying, Thus says Sennacherib king of Assyria, On what are you relying, that you stand siege in Jerusalem? Is not Hezekiah misleading you, that he may give you over to die by famine and by thirst? Then he tells you, The Lord our God will deliver us from the hand of the king of Assyria. Has not the same Hezekiah taken away his high places, and his altars, and commanded Judah and Jerusalem? Before one altar you shall worship, and upon it you shall burn your sacrifices. Do you not know what I and my fathers have done to all the peoples of other lands? Were the gods of the nations of those lands at all able to deliver their lands out of my hand? Who among all the gods of those nations which my fathers utterly destroyed was able to deliver his people from my hand, that your God should be able to deliver you from my hand? Now therefore, do not let Hezekiah deceive you or mislead you in this fashion, and do not believe him, for no god of any nation or kingdom has been able to deliver his people from my hand or from the hand of my fathers. How much less will your God deliver you out of my hand? And his servant said still more against the Lord God and against his servant Hezekiah. And he wrote letters to cast contempt on the Lord the God of Israel and to speak against him, saying, Like the gods of the nations of the lands who have not delivered their people from my hands, so the God of Hezekiah will not deliver his people from my hand. And they shouted it with a loud voice in the language of Judah to the people of Jerusalem who were upon the wall to frighten and terrify them in order that they might take the city. And they spoke to the God of Jerusalem as they spoke of the gods of the peoples of the earth, which are the work of men's hands. Then Hezekiah the king of Isaiah, the prophet, the son of Amos, prayed because of this and cried to heaven. And the Lord sent an angel who cut off all the mighty warriors and commanders and officers in the camp of the king of Assyria. So he returned with shame of face to his own land. And when he came into the house of his God, some of his own sons struck him down there with the sword. So the Lord saved Hezekiah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem from the hand of Sennacherib, king of Assyria, and from the hand of all his enemies. And he gave them rest on every side. And many brought gifts to the Lord to Jerusalem, and precious things to Hezekiah king of Judah, so that he was exalted in the sight of all nations from that time onward. He who belittles his neighbor lacks sense, but a man of understanding remains silent. He who goes about as a table-bearer reveals secrets, but he who is trustworthy in spirit keeps a thing hidden. Where there is no guidance, a people falls, but in an abundance of counselors there is safety. He who gives surety for a stranger will smart for it, but he who hates suretyship is secure. A gracious woman gets honor, and violent men get riches. A man who is kind benefits himself, but a cruel man hurts himself. A wicked man earns deceptive wages, but one who sows righteousness gets a sure reward. He who is steadfast in righteousness will live, but he who pursues evil will die. Men of perverse mind are an abomination to the Lord, but those of blameless ways are his delight. Be assured, an evil man will not go unpunished, but those who are righteous will be delivered. Like a gold ring in a swine's snout, it is a beautiful woman without discretion. The desire of the righteous ends only in good, the expectation of the wicked in wrath. One man gives freely, yet grows all the richer. Another withholds what he should give, and only suffers want. A liberal man will be enriched, and one who waters will himself be watered. The people curse him who holds back grain, but a blessing is on the head of him who sells it. He who diligently seeks good seeks favor, but evil comes to him who searches for it. He who trusts in his riches will wither, but the righteous man will flourish like a green leaf. He who troubles his household will inherit wind, and the fool will be servant to the wise. The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life but lawlessness takes away lives. If the righteous is repaid on earth, how much more the wicked and the sinner. Then it seemed good to the apostles and the elders, with the whole church, to choose men from among them and send them to Antioch with Paul and Barnabas. They sent Judas called Barsabbas, 
and Silas, leading men among the brethren, with the following letter. The brethren, both the apostles and the elders, to the brethren, who are of the Gentiles in Antioch and Syria and Cilicia, greeting. Since we have heard that some persons from us have troubled you with words, unsettling your minds, although we gave them no instructions, it has seemed good to us in assembly to choose men and send them to you with our beloved Barnabas and Paul, men who have risked their lives for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ. We have therefore sent Judas and Silas, who themselves will tell you the same things by word of mouth. For it has seemed good to the Holy Spirit and to us to lay upon you no greater burden than these necessary things, that you should abstain from what has been sacrificed to idols, and from blood, and from what is strangled, and from unchastity. If you keep yourselves from these, you will do well. Farewell. So when they were sent off, they went down to Antioch, and having gathered the congregation together, they delivered the letter. And when they read it, they rejoiced at the exhortation. And Judas and Silas, who were themselves prophets, exhorted the brethren with many words and strengthened them. And after they had spent some time, they were sent off in peace by the brethren to those who had sent them. But Paul and Barnabas remained in Antioch, teaching and preaching the word of the Lord, with many others also. And after some days, Paul said to Barnabas, Come, let us return and visit the brethren in every city where we proclaimed the word of the Lord, and see how they are. And Barnabas wanted to take with them John, called Mark. But Paul thought best not to take with them one who had withdrawn from them in Pamphylia, and had not gone with them to the work. And there arose a sharp contention, so that they separated from each other. Barnabas took Mark with him, and sailed away to Cyprus. But Paul chose Silas and departed, being commended by the brethren to the grace of the Lord. And he went through Syria and Cilicia, strengthening the churches. The world lies to us. It tries to convince us that we can fix all our problems with things that can be bought. It tries to take away our confidence in God by mocking our faith. When the Assyrian army invades Judah, the king of Assyria sends out propaganda messengers who shout to the defenders of Jerusalem, No god of any nation or kingdom has been able to deliver his people from my hand or from the hand of my fathers. How much less will your god deliver you out of my hand? Yet the soldiers and people of Jerusalem keep King Hezekiah's words in their hearts. Do not be afraid or dismayed before the king of Assyria and all the horde that is with him, for there is one greater with us than with him. Indeed, the angel of the Lord comes to strike down the army of Assyria, and Sennacherib himself is assassinated by his own sons. When we are insulted for our faith, or when the pressures and temptations of the world surround us, we need to remember Hezekiah's encouragement that there is one greater with us than with our enemies. How do you find confidence in the Lord in times of conflict?